Okay, so no Abby, right? No Grace? No Sylvia? I'm here. Grace. Yeah, Grace M, yeah. I'm sorry. I was talking about Grace Garcia. Sorry. <clears throat> All right, no Isaiah, no Draw, no Yahir, no Xander, no Andrea. Is that right? Okay. If they come in, we'll catch them up. Happy uh, Tuesday to you. Um, real quick, if you get to module four, we'll go over uh, what we need to do in terms of the review. Of course, it looks like it may not be open. Let me reset it and see what happens. What the heck? I thought that opened up yesterday. It's not going to be good if you can't see it. Well, we'll try it now. Maybe it'll show. If it doesn't show for you, let me know. I thought I had opened it. So, uh, the what? Um, I, I, my laptop isn't working, so I'm, I'm on my phone right now, so I can't do the thing on the laptop. Okay. Um, so you want to get to uh, Unit 4. Uh, we'll uh, review the uh, Russian Revolution. We'll play the review game together and get you ready to uh, take the unit test. So this is where you should be at right now. When's the unit test? Tomorrow. All right. All right. So uh, first thing I want to show you and go over uh, with you uh, is just a quick review of what we've covered uh, in terms of Russia before Bloody Sunday, 1905, right, where uh, the workers basically just have a list of demands for the czar, and uh, hundreds of people are shot, thousands are injured, uh, basically, in an attack on uh, protesters for additional rights. So things leading up to World War I, the disappointment, and the negative connotations of Russia entering World War I, over 4 million dead the first year of World War I, remember that starts 1914, and so you have this building throughout 14, 15, 16, until you get to the February Revolution of 17. Uh, the czars we talked about, not very popular. Uh, a number of things uh, that he did wrong and caused a lot of anger in Russia. So we had covered that. Um, we talked about the bad working conditions the people like um, others in Europe, France, Britain, the United States wanted a legislative body. Um, sorry for the gruesome pictures, but that is sort of what you're looking at. Uh, rapid growth because of industrialization, a lot of starvation, um, a lot of unhappy people. And then when you uh, contrast that between how the czar and his family were living, and how they presented themselves in, in public. We saw the video last week of them all dressed up, and then you see people starving. You can see how that sorts of anger people. Uh, we talked about the weird dynamic of Rasputin and what he did um, because of the um, sort of marrying within a family. You had uh, hemophilia uh, in the family, and then the worst part uh, for the Russians is how bad Russia did in World War I. And here you can see sort of the cartoon Rasputin seen as somebody very, very bad controlling the government when Nicholas II went up to and tried to uh, get a hold of 
the things going on in World War I up at the front. So you're going to have two revolutions, the February Revolution and October Revolution. Those are finished by March and November. That there is Lenin leading the people. And so the February Revolution was due to the worker strikes and the food riots. This is where you get the provisional government of Kerensky. And you have the first Soviet. So that is the Petrograd Soviet. Remember, the soldiers would not fire on the strikers or the workers. And so you get this um, basically Bolshevik movement. The Bolsheviks are going to be the communists. The uh, Mensheviks are going to be the white army, those that support the provisional government. And so uh, the leader and first leader of the Soviet Union is going to be Lenin and then it's going to be Stalin. So um, we'll get to that as we get through, but that's sort of where things are led. Lenin, because the provincial government was not very strong, did not do a lot of things, he starts running on this slogan, peace, land, and bread, right? Peace in our time, getting us out of World War I. Land for all of you who uh, have been working in factories and cannot make a decent living and bread for all of you that had been starving. And so it becomes a very popular uh, slogan and it leads the Red Army to have lots of followers and people that uh, will support the Bolsheviks and the communists and that's what ends up happening. Now they'll fight a short civil war uh, between the White Army, which were the Mensheviks and the Red Army, which are the Bolsheviks that become the communists. The communists are going to win when they do, the first thing that they do is negotiate that treaty of Brest-Lavosk with the Germans to get out of World War I. Um, it gives the Germans a number of land areas in the western part of Russia. And then you'll have um, furtherance of the Red Army versus the White Army in terms of setting up the Soviet Socialist Republics. And that's where you get the USSR. And so that flag there will be seven, eight decades worth of history, especially with the Cold War and what happens with the United States. Anything you want me to cover more on that portion? Okay, so next thing, if you click on, um, your next page, the review game is set up, but I will uh, open this up and uh, we'll go over this together. In the second semester, I think I've done a much better job of tying in the review questions with the actual unit test. So there's 25 um, questions in this review game. The unit test is 25 questions. Uh, you go over this and do well and use the review game as a guide you should do extremely well on the unit test. So 25 questions on the review game, 25 questions on the test. Hopefully you know what that means. So give me just a second, I'll bring this up. This will be open. Um, let me see how long. Ends in 15 days, yeah, so this, the longest I could keep this unit review open was for um, just short of 25 days. So the review game will be open even though nothing loses full credit until February 26th. The review game is only open until uh, it looks like February 17th, okay? Um, but if you want to, I'll show you and we'll go through everything. So this will be the game pin that you'll want to do. So if you go to kahoot.it and put in the game pin 400929, uh, we can play the game together. So I'll unlock this so you can do that on your screen. And then I'll put this in the chat room. So this is- um, uh, I, I can't do that. Do I have to do that? So if you go to kahoot.it and put that pin in. 
I don't think I could do that on, on the phone. You can play on your phone. All right. If I'm, you go I'm, to if you go to a uh, web browser and put in Kahoot.it, put in the game pin four zero zero nine two nine, you can play with us. You can play right on your phone. All right. They used to do it in my class when we were in person. Okay, so how did the Russian Revolution affect the course of World War I? You can still go to Kahoot.it, put in the game pin 400929, it's on the screen, in the chat room, and you can still join. Right, Russian Revolution, as we said, uh, causes the Russians to exit the war before the end, they give a bunch of land to Germany. All right, which of the following leaders was responsible for the great purge? Stalin. Stalin is the one that gets rid of everybody. Remember, Lenin dies of a stroke, basically like a brain aneurysm. Stalin purges everybody who might be a threat to him. Uh, during the Bolshevik Revolution, why did Vladimir Lenin promise peace, land, and bread? We just talked about this. Right? To gain support from the normal people, from the everyday people, to overthrow the provisional government and take charge. All right, ruler of the Soviet Union who rose to power by having potential enemies labeled traitors and killed. So Stalin is absolutely ruthless. One of the, um, shall we say, harshest dictators of the last century. Uh, killed uh, probably uh, well over a million in terms of the number of people that he actually killed, um, policies in terms of starvation or sent to Siberia and are never heard from again. Uh, but Stalin was much more harsh than Lenin. Having ousted the provisional government, the Bolsheviks negotiated an armistice with Germany that was called what? The 
Treaty of brest lavosk All right, what was the result of the February Revolution? Nicholas, right, resigns as czar. Remember, he tries to abdicate and give it to his brother. His brother goes, no way in the world, right? We know what happens in France with the king and the queen getting their heads chopped off and all of that uh, sort of reign of terror. Uh, so that's a big no thank you. Uh, what major changes occurred in Russia after the February Revolution? Czar's overthrown, provisional government's created. What is the goal of the October Revolution in Russia? Replace a provisional government with a socialist Marxist government to take over the revolution. Uh, how did Stalin use his power to defeat his rivals and ultimately become the leader of Russia? imprisoned or executed his rivals. The Russian Revolution had many causes. Which of the following was one of the political causes? So uh, political cause is something uh, that related to politics. So Bloody Sunday Massacre is the best answer in that uh, realm because they wanted political change, right? They were making a march on the Tsar's palace to ask for reforms. Those reforms are political in nature. So that's why it would be the Bloody Sunday Massacre instead of the food shortages. Food shortages would be a uh, cultural or economic reason. Uh, Vladimir Lenin was the first premier of the Soviet Union. How did he come to power? Okay, he leads nearly a bloodless coup against the provisional government and its leader Kerensky, the civil war between uh, Lenin's Red Army, Kerensky's White Army, won't come until later. Uh, Stalin becomes leader of Russia in 21 after Lenin's death. What becomes of Trotsky after Stalin takes power? Okay. Those of you that put red and blue, it's true. So Trotsky um, becomes uh, People's Commissar for Foreign Affairs after the founding and leading the Red Army to a defeat of the White Army. 
he then realizes he's not safe as Stalin is getting rid of anybody who might pose a threat or anybody that might threaten Stalin's power. So he um, flees to Mexico, and in Mexico, he is killed by a Soviet agent, which is a great story in itself, too, by the way. Well, I guess not getting killed. Which of the following is not a reason why Russia served here during World War II or World War I? Right? Japan attacks Russia from the east. That is not a reason why. Uh, the lack of supplies for Russian troops is a reason. Uh, poor leadership in the Russian government through the Tsar is a reason. The Russian Revolution is taking place on the home front. That is a reason. All three of those are reasons why um, Russia basically signs the peace treaty with Germany. The attack uh, by Japan in the eastern part of Russia is not a reason why. That Sino-Japanese war had happened earlier. Which of the following was an immediate effect of the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917? So this would be the October Revolution. Okay. Once that happens, right, once the October Revolution happens, you have the communists, the hardliners under Stalin and Lenin and Trotsky with support of the Red Army, and they begin a civil war with the Mensheviks or those led by the White Army or supported by the White Army would probably be a better term. Lenin's leadership of Russia agreed with the writings of Karl Marx and that what? Bolshevik party becomes the communist party. All right, which leader is credited with transforming the Soviet Union into a totalitarian state? So basically a dictator state or a state led country led by a dictator. Stalin. Stalin is one of the uh, biggest totalitarian forces in the world in the 1900s. Uh, in a couple of units, we'll look at other totalitarian states, fascist states like uh, Hitler in Germany, Mussolini in Italy. Stalin's agricultural revolution and the system of collected farming resulted in what? So either red or yellow in this case would be correct. So remember one of the things about Marxism and one of the things that the Bolsheviks and then obviously the communists is what they end up being is everybody has a share in everything that's produced. And so what they do is they go throughout the countryside and basically collect all of the farms from the farmers who had been doing it for generations. Two problems with that. One, is they're the ones that know how to farm. Two, even if they're allowed to stay on their farm, there's really no incentive for them to try and have the best crop yield possible. So there's a huge dec uh, decrease in the production of wheat. Remember the Russians were already dealing with uh, famine, starvation. This just makes it worse. And with uh, not enough wheat, you can't make enough bread, 
without enough bread, you're going to have deaths of millions of peasants who do not have enough food. Stalin maintained his power in Russia by doing what? uses force and violence. Most of the time, it's just a branch of the Red Army. A lot of you put the Red Army, and to an extent, he uses them, but not really to uh, carry out executions and get rid of uh, people he sees as a political worry. Which of the following statements is most correct concerning Russia's involvement in World War I? Okay, Russia is one of the first countries to enter the war, one of the first countries to get out of the war. So the other two are not correct. Uh, the Russian Revolution affected World War I by doing what? Right? Russian Revolution really causes Russia to exit the war. They will sign a treaty. That treaty gives a bunch of land to Germany on the western part of Russia. Uh, devastating effects of World War I on Russia eventually led to So there's only one statement out of those four that's even true, regardless of what's being said. Uh, the rise of the czar, no, actually the czar's power lessens uh, because of World War I. Uh, the rise of Rasputin, Rasputin is seen as a problem and is assassinated. Uh, so that's not true. Then you have the rise of the Russian monarchy. Actually, they kill the czar, the czarina, the entire family uh, that were being held there. The totalitarian reign of Stalin is the only one, right, that has a direct effect on Russia because of World War I. The original Bolsheviks brought a new system of government, which would eventually be called what? Communism. Bolsheviks are the first to bring communism to a country in the world. Then it'll spread to China, Cuba, Vietnam. Which of the following events led to unrest in Russia and caused the Russian Revolution? All of those are true. So if you put red, blue, or yellow, you're correct. But the bad working conditions, that's why they marched on the Tsar's palace. And then, of course, we know what happened on Bloody Sunday. Uh, child labor and a large gap between the rich and the poor. Same thing that we saw with industrialization in Europe and America. And then you have basically an authoritarian ruling party. The Tsar promises changes, promises a legislative body, then takes it back when they don't... Uh, do what he wants them to do. So all of those are true. Uh, what was the final event that led to Tsar Nicholas II stepping down as ruler?
Tsar Nicholas II's disastrous handing of the things with regards to World War I. Was not a military leader, didn't have experience. Um, when he goes to the front, he makes more and more poor decisions. Uh, and in fact, another two million are killed uh, in the next six months after he takes control. All right, one way Lenin maintained control of Russia was to employ the use of what? Commissars. Commissars he put in charge of certain uh, divisions of government and then he used those commissars who were loyal to him to basically root out anybody that might be a suspected uh, saboteur of his leadership. And those are the ones that he killed, like Trotsky, or sent to Siberia, um, as thousands and thousands did. That's Sarah in third. Ryan in second. Joanna, did you finish first? There you go. Congrats. Okay. Um, so, as I said, this is open uh, throughout uh, basically the week until we get to uh, next Monday uh, when the test will start showing up. We will... meet tomorrow and uh, go over what you'll do. Um, as I said, yesterday at 3.15, you should have seen your assignments from module three, week three show up. So this February Revolution Go Formative is still open. Um, if you turned in your assignments by, I'd say, 4 or 4.10, I was done grading and, and uploading those scores, um, you should be able to um, see your grade. If you have not turned them in yet, that's why you have a red uh, portion of the grading area, and then the TCI is still open. So... Both of those assignments are still open. If you turn them in by 4, 410 yesterday, uh, they are graded and put into Aries. Check and make sure your score is right. If you did that after, say, 410 yesterday, I will grade those, get those grades updated before tomorrow. Um, but as always, check and make sure everything looks right. We'll meet again uh, tomorrow at 150, right? That's our class time and we'll get you set up with the test and how to access that. Uh, I'm not sure that it's open yet. Do the review game as many times as possible uh, because as I said, those 25 questions are going to be um, very helpful in the 25 questions on the unit test, right? So if you can't take that hint, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you can stick around. Otherwise, we're done, and we will go from there. Bye, Mr. Grock. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you. I have a question. Go for it. Well, will I start to take the test? It's not my first time in the class. Uh, no, but I'm going to uh, send you a link. Uh, there is a, a syllabus, and I'll have you uh, and your parents go over the syllabus electronically, sign that, and send that back. All right. Um, would that be all? Um, and there'll be one more uh, just in terms of logging in, but I'll have to walk you through that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah.
Good. Uh, have a nice day. You too. Take it easy. Any other questions?